What does a cloud engineer actually do? Now, I've been working in the cloud for the past seven years, and I want to give you all the insights so you understand the day-to-day -day tasks of a cloud engineer because you've clicked on this video and are interested in pursuing a career in the cloud and specifically being a cloud engineer. To be honest, this is one of the best tech roles that I've ever been in, and I'm going to explain exactly why. And becoming a cloud engineer is one of the most in-demand tech roles for the next decade and beyond. And once you've watched this video, your interest will spike even more to pursue a career in the cloud. Now, becoming a cloud engineer has made me over $100,000 per year and you can do it too. Now, if you are interested in the cloud, then you should check out my weekly newsletter where I share my gems that I've found throughout the week working with tech startups along with the learnings that I share throughout my career. So firstly, let's understand what cloud engineering is and break down the term cloud. Imagine all the websites you visit, the apps you use, and the online services that are part of your day-to-day -day life. These apps aren't running from a single computer somewhere. They operate from the cloud. Basically, the cloud is a network of servers that store data and applications over the internet rather than on a single computer hard drive. Now, back in the day, you could install applications directly to your computer. And as technology advanced, we saw the launch of cloud services. All applications are now accessible via your browser through the internet. Before the cloud, businesses would run their applications and services from physical data centers. These were super expensive to manage, run, and maintain, and you could never really work out how much storage, networking, and server capacity you needed. And this is where the cloud came into the picture. Companies like AWS, Azure, and GCP have built massive physical data centers in regions across the world. And they allow businesses like Netflix, Spotify, X, Shopify to use their services. Essentially, these companies are renting storage, networking, and servers from Azure, AWS, and GCP. And they only pay for what they use and need rather than having all these big data centers running themselves. Now, a cloud engineer is like a superhero of the cloud world. They help businesses like Netflix move their physical operations from data centers into the cloud. This doesn't just make things faster and more efficient, but it can also cut costs and allow companies to scale their services much more easily. A cloud engineer bridges the gap between business and the cloud platform and helps businesses build their dream infrastructure in the cloud. So what does a day in the the life of a cloud engineer look like? And to understand this, I have broken this down into four pillars. These pillars are tasks, operations, technologies, and projects. So you get a full view and understanding of what life is really like as a cloud engineer. And I'm also going to share how you can win a free copy of my cloud engineer handbook. Now let's start with the first pillar, which is tasks. And what I love about being a cloud engineer is the sheer diversity in the work that I do. One day I can be working on building infrastructure in the cloud with Terraform. The next day I can be building CI CD pipelines with a GitHub Actions. And the next I can be architecting solutions for clients. If you are someone who wants to just do one thing like coding, then the cloud might not be the best option for you. Instead, you should look at becoming either a back end or front end software engineer and focus on application development. Now, if you are someone who likes doing different things, then getting a job in the cloud and specifically a cloud engineer is the route to take. Now, there are overlaps as a cloud engineer into being a solution architect and DevOps engineer, but essentially you are a jack of all trades and you use different tools and technologies to build solutions for customers. Now, what's also great is how many different services that there are in the cloud. For example, if you work with AWS, you know they have over 200 services and there is just so many different ways that you can build solutions for customers. Another big cloud engineer task is planning and strategy. Now, I typically work with a team to plan out what services or applications will be moved to the cloud. For example, I work with software engineers, QAs, engineering managers, architects, and more. And together, we decide what applications goes where, and we discuss the solutions with my clients. Now, with my current client, I'm working on a cloud migration and doing all the architecture design, CI, CD, infrastructure as code, and then presenting 
presenting them with the best route forward. They have to decide what goes where, but it's my job as a cloud engineer to give the best possible options and then go and implement it. Now, depending on your project, you can also be working alongside a solution architect who will design a solution based on the customer requirements, and then you go and build it in the cloud. Now, also depending on the company that you're working for, there might be more cloud engineers in the team, and then you split up and share the workload on the project. The next pillar of a cloud engineer is operations, which includes deployments, monitoring, and maintenance. Now, once a project has started and we have made a plan, design, and task for the migration of an application to the cloud, this is where we as cloud engineers get our hands dirty and begin the action phase, which is also known as the build phase. This involves setting up the cloud environment, the accounts, transferring all the data, applications, and services onto the cloud servers. Now, I primarily focus on building on AWS Cloud, which is the most popular cloud platform. And to build infrastructure, I use infrastructure as code, such as Terraform, this helps us codify our infrastructure instead of building and clicking things through the consoles. Now, once everything is up and running, we put in place monitoring capabilities to make sure that the applications and systems are running smoothly. If something goes wrong, like a server goes down or there is a security issue, it's our job to debug it and fix it. Now, the next pillar of a cloud engineer is technologies, and I'm going to cover what I use and what I think that you should learn if you are just getting started. Now, earlier in this video, I mentioned that as a cloud engineer, you work on such diverse set of tasks, tools, and technologies, which is what I love most about the role. But fundamentally, there are some core technologies that are consistent that I use for almost every single project. Now, firstly, we have the cloud platform. This can be AWS, Azure, or GCP. Now, I use AWS and I'm certified in AWS certifications to a professional level. But depending on the business size and industry, this usually determines determines the cloud that they are using. A lot of the public sector use a hybrid cloud, which is AWS mixed with Azure or GCP, and a lot of startups are using AWS. So I recommend just picking a platform and learning with it and just learning it really well. AWS is the biggest, Azure is picking up, and GCP is a little bit behind, but could be a great option for the long term. Next, we have infrastructure's code, which is what we use as cloud engineers to manage and provision cloud resources. Instead of manually setting up servers and databases, we write code that automates this process. Now, popular tools for infrastructure's code include Terraform, AWS CloudFormation, and AWS CDK. I'm sure Azure and GCP have their own as well. But if you are starting out, I recommend learning Terraform because it's cloud agnostic, meaning you can use Terraform for all cloud platforms and not specifically for one. Terraform is used mostly as a standard infrastructure's code tool, but I am seeing a pattern where businesses are using native infrastructures to code tools tied to their cloud platform, like the CDK, for example. Next, we have CICD, also known as continuous integration and continuous deployment. This is a set of practices that involve automatically building, testing, and deploying applications. The aim for CICD is to make the release process faster and more robust. And there are so many CICD tools out there, such as Jenkins, GitLab, and GitHub Actions. Now, I recommend starting with Jenkins because it's the most well known and it's also a bit clunky to learn. But if you learn how to use Jenkins, then you'll be able to pick up any other CI/CD tool such as GitHub Actions, which is really picking up in the industry and integrates really well with all cloud platforms. The next technologies I recommend you look into and learning is containerization, starting with Docker and then Kubernetes. Now, Docker is a tool that helps package up applications and their dependencies together, making it way easier to move those applications around. Now, Kubernetes helps in automating the deployment, scaling, and operation of application containers. Think of it as a manager for all the containers that Docker creates. I haven't mastered containers yet, but it is something on my roadmap to learn, but not all companies require this, but it's also a great technology and great skill to have in your toolbox. Now, finally, it's a programming language. This is a controversial one because I know a lot of cloud engineers that do not actually know how to code. But if you want to 
stand out, then you should learn how to write code. And I recommend learning Python because it's simple to learn and it's widely used across the cloud. Our next pillar is projects. And this is where I learn the most as a cloud engineer and where I have the most fun. Now, I mentioned that as a cloud engineer, I work on a wide range of projects. For instance, a retail company might want to move its online store to the cloud and it wants to better handle high traffic days like Black Friday. Or a healthcare provider might want to use cloud services to securely store patient data and make it accessible to medical professionals anywhere in the world. You can also have an internal project, like a company might want to move its employee database to the cloud to make it easier for HR to manage information for employees to access their benefits or paychecks online. Another great example is startups, building their infrastructure using the console and then later down the line, wanting to rebuild it with infrastructure as code. Now, I genuinely believe that being a cloud engineer is the best job within the tech industry and cloud is only getting bigger, meaning more and more businesses need to migrate to the cloud and then also modernize and re-architect the applications to run in the cloud and scale much better to deliver better customer experience. I hope this gives you a clearer picture of what cloud engineers do each day. Now, don't forget to hit that subscribe button if you found this video helpful. Sign up to my newsletter and I'll see you on the next video. Peace.